balik gitu kan karena the shaking pada. was very hard and the windows all began to break that was when i realized that this was no ordinary earthquake but i didn't realize that the sea would come inland i ran with my husband and two children we ran to the end of the road and it was jammed with cars I went up into a two-story house. It was crowded with women and children. That was when I first saw the waves higher than a coconut tree. I was carrying my young son and the house collapsed on us. And then he was gone. Early in the morning of December 26th, 2004, a powerful earthquake shook Indonesia followed by a massive tsunami that spread out across the Indian Ocean. Over 220,000 people lost their lives. There was no official tsunami warning system for the Indian Ocean in 2004, and many didn't recognize the natural warning signs. On the island of Sumatra, in the village of Jantan, half of the people perished when the tsunami leveled their village. In contrast, on the tiny neighboring island of Simalua, all of the villagers of Langi survived. Why the difference? Families in Langi had passed down stories of a deadly earthquake and tsunami in 1907. When the earthquake struck in 2004, residents immediately reacted by fleeing to high ground. Knowledge of the natural tsunami warning signs is key to saving lives. A tsunami is a series of waves created by displacement of a large volume of water. It may follow a large earthquake, volcanic eruption, or underwater landslide. Ground shaking may be your first natural warning. The largest and most deadly earthquakes and tsunamis are created at areas called subduction zones, where plates forming Earth's crust are pulled down into Earth's interior. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami originated at the Sumatra subduction zone. A similar catastrophic event occurred in 1700 off the northwest coast of the United States in an area called the Cascadia subduction zone. During subduction, the descending plate sticks, dragging the overlying plate with it. Over hundreds of years, stress builds up along the fault between these plates. Eventually, the fault slips, thrusting the overlying plate and water column upwards. A tsunami is formed. Though most tsunamis form at subduction zones, all coasts are vulnerable to them. If a tsunami originates across the ocean, you will not feel the earthquake. Without an official warning, Your first sign of the tsunami will be right before it floods the coast. You might see the water rapidly receding well past low tide, exposing the sea floor. A dark or foamy wall of water may be visible on the horizon. You might also hear a distinct train-like roar as the water rushes inland. If you feel an earthquake, you have only minutes to react. If there's no ground shaking, you may only see or hear the tsunami itself. Don't wait for an official warning. Destructive tsunamis are rare, but at some point in the future, perhaps in our lifetimes, the Cascadia subduction zone off the US West Coast will rupture again. Imagine what might happen when that day comes. Tim and Maria are having dinner at home with their two children, three blocks from the Oregon coast. Across the Pacific Ocean in Hawaii, Jake is surfing. Up in Alaska, Paul is monitoring for earthquakes at the West Coast Alaska Tsunami Warning Center. Lonnie, Hawaii's emergency manager, is teaching third graders about tsunamis. Suddenly, A powerful earthquake occurs along the Cascadia subduction zone. Tim and Maria's house starts shaking violently. They duck under the table as bookcases crash and dishes break around them. At the same time, Paul hears alarm sound as a global network of seismometers detects a large earthquake off the Oregon coast. 
When the shaking stops, Tim grabs the family emergency kit and they all rush outside. Car alarms are sounding and they see toppled trees and damaged houses. They know their house is in a tsunami evacuation zone, so they head on foot toward high ground. Paul's team estimates the earthquake's magnitude at 9.1 on the Richter scale. The Tsunami Warning Center issues an alert to West Coast states and British Columbia about a possible tsunami. Lonnie receives an alert on her cell phone and heads to her office at Hawaii Civil Defense where an emergency team is assembling. 15 minutes have passed since the quake. In Hawaii, Jake has no idea that a tsunami is heading his way. Meanwhile, Tim and Maria reach the evacuation site, joining hundreds of other evacuees. 20 minutes after the earthquake, they watch from high above as the ocean recedes and the first tsunami wave floods the coast. Coastal tide stations detect the massive tsunami as it comes ashore. Out in the Pacific Ocean, the tsunami triggers an array of deep water bottom pressure sensors. Paul receives all of this information via satellite, which confirms a tsunami. He sends an updated warning to Lani for coastal flooding and strong currents in Hawaii. As darkness falls, Tim and Maria hear the roar of another wave approaching. Two and a half hours since it was created, the tsunami is halfway to Hawaii and will strike the coast in two hours. Sirens sound in coastal communities throughout Hawaii. Jake hears the sirens and paddles ashore to find out what's going on. He gathers his surfboard and belongings and drives out of the evacuation zone. Other countries around the Pacific receive the warning and prepare for the tsunami's arrival. Before this, I had never even heard the word tsunami. My advice is, if you feel a big earthquake, a long earthquake, you should search for high ground. 